Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to our first ever Patreon supported video. In case you didn't know, the Mana Source basically survives on the donations of you awesome people. Patreon is a website that allows you to donate any amount of money to the channel per month. Since YouTube pays in pennies, Patreon allows us to survive and make more awesome content for all of you. If you're interested in donating to help the channel keep going, the link will be right down there in the description. If you do choose to donate, you're a lifesaver and we love you. Because we reached our first Patreon goal, the patrons got to choose a video topic and we would cover it. They decided they wanted to see a video on balancing magic and the theory of the color pie. We've got some pretty intelligent patrons, let me tell you. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Help us out a lot. Where to even begin with this kind of video? Might as well start with the color pie itself. This graphic represents a broad definition of what each color in magic is all about. Most every card in the game in each of these colors can be traced back to a word on this wheel. The theme of white is morality and order, it's about strict organization. Blue is dedicated to logic and technology, with a craving for knowledge and a tendency to avoid conflict. Black is strictly selfish. It's about greed in every form, greed for power, greed to protect oneself, anything to stay ahead. Red is emotion incarnate. Impulsive actions, nothing to hold you back, red is the color of true freedom and true chaos. Lastly, green is purely instinctual. The color represents all things primal, a survivor's instinct. It's all about growing and ensuring your own survival through strength and a sense of interdependence with nature. As you can see, these colors have distinct characteristics. Each one embodies emotions and feelings we all have. One of the best parts about magic, these colors are values that people can relate to. Let's go a little deeper. We'll go in Wuburg order and begin with white. The color is ultimately designed around the concept of true organization. White uses laws and religion to gather as many people together as possible. It values groupthink and massive numbers. Quantity over quality is a good way to put it. You see this in their various token makers, many of them either religious in nature or war leaders. White is about brandishing a flag, a flag that if you don't follow, they don't want anything to do with you. To say white is ethnocentric would not be an exaggeration. Cards like Crusade and Honor of the Pure are perfect examples of this. White empowers white, as long as the soldiers do what they're told and stay in line, of course. This leads us to white's strengths and weaknesses. White can be a strong color for a few reasons. First, it has the power to mass a board state unlike any other. The most efficient token makers are in white. The most efficient pump spells for them are in white. It's a very white mechanic. The color doesn't care about losing foot soldiers. As long as someone survives and the battle is won, it was worth it. There is no focus on the individual. This makes the color strong in a way. Massive board state of unknown replaceable soldiers and attack until you win. Losing them doesn't matter because they're just soldiers. Yeah, white philosophy. It's about their ideals winning the day. The other strength of white is its intense self-worth. This manifests in removal spells like Path to Exile and Wrath of God. White is so sure of itself and so sure that everything else is wrong, it has no problem calling upon great power to utterly annihilate its enemies. It just doesn't care. You aren't us. You deserve to not exist. This leads to balanced effects like Day of Judgment and infamously balanced itself that seem to affect both players equally. Unsurprisingly, they're at their most effective when you build your deck so you're not as hindered by them. White's moral high ground carries over to its removal spells like Swords to Plowshares and even more recently Journey to Nowhere and Suspension Field. They represent effects that, in theory, have answers or somehow compensate their victims. However, in practice, those answers aren't worth the effort and the compensation isn't worth as much as what was lost. White's weakness? We've already covered it. Because of its lack of interest in singular figures, the creatures usually lack substance or true power. In one versus one combat, most white creatures will lose to equally costed creatures of other colors, even other tokens. White creates more 1-1 one -one tokens than any other color, even red. These tokens lose to the 2-2 zombies of black and the 2-2 wolves and 3-3 elephants of green. The creature quality is abysmal because white doesn't care about that. Individuals aren't important, the end game is what's important. Blue, the most hated and loved color in magic. Blue represents intelligence in its purest form. The color is designed around knowledge. All that blue wants to do is everything. It wants to learn everything. Or perhaps more precisely, blue wants to learn anything. Blue believes that the universe is ever-changing based on how it's influenced by the actions of its inhabitants. In turn, blue holds the individual as a blank slate that can be totally shaped by its actions. Because of this, if anything, blue always wants more information. It needs to know everything. How else will blue know how to make the proper move if it doesn't have perfect information? 
While other colors have their emotions or morals, blue acts solely based on the knowledge it's gained. Is this the right move? How do I know? Will it fail? What's the chance of success? The color is methodical and deliberate with its actions. Card draw is the continuing search for knowledge and information. Counter spells and combat tricks are the rewards from gaining such knowledge. Blue has figured out how to manipulate magic itself to cancel or redirect spells. Through painstaking research, this color of magic has solved magic. It understands how it works above all other colors, and that's where blue's strength is. Countering spells is something blue has over every other color, and that will likely never change except for some corner case cards. Controlling a board, controlling another color, that's what blue does best. It knows the right way to live. If you don't act accordingly, blue will stop you and force you to act the way you should. Treachery, domestication, control magic. All classic examples of blue's thought process. You're doing it wrong here. Let me show you how to do it right. Blue controls because every other color is making mistakes. It's that simple. Of course, this thirst for knowledge can also be a weakness. In this case, blue's only weakness. The color is slow. Because blue values knowledge so much, it takes time to analyze a situation and prepare the best counterattack to it. Sometimes other colors are just too quick. Brute force is how you beat blue. It's the only way, really. The longer an encounter goes, the more time blue has to gain knowledge. The more knowledge the color acquires, the less of a chance anyone else has of winning. Blue is the late game in every sense of the word. You'll notice in the original color pie, technology was a big sub-theme of blue. This is solely because blue understands how to build things. It's done enough research to understand how things are supposed to be built. The most efficient way to construct anything, blue knows it. This is why, even now, it's associated with artifacts much more than any other color. White gets to interact with equipment specifically because its armies can use it to fight, but blue cares the most about artifacts in general. It understands the pursuit of perfection unlike any other color. Just a tidbit I figured you'd want to know. Black is greed. Black is ambition and ruthless pragmatism in a way. Black knows what power is, how to get it, and how important it is. It sees the world for what it is. A place run by those who have political influence, money, connections, those who spread fear. It's clear to black what power gives you, everything. And that's the color in a nutshell, right there. Black wants everything. And it sees no reason not to take it. Unlike the other colors, black doesn't have a rule set. Black does whatever it wants to get where it wants to go, putting the self above all else. Instead of trying to change existence to be what it wants, black accepts what the world around it is like. It knows people are selfish and ultimately desperate for validation, for power, for purpose. Black recognizes this and harnesses it. Simply put, black just doesn't give a crap. Because black doesn't care about changing the world and because black doesn't have a rule set, it doesn't care about how many people it hurts on its way to attaining power. Parasitism is a black theme, arguably the biggest one. Black will destroy others to further its own cause. It wouldn't make sense not to. Look at drain life, consume spirit, exsanguinate. These bolster black's power with no regard for the opponent. That's black's advantage. No inhibitions, no holding back. There's no reason not to. Black won't even spare itself if it needs to sacrifice to achieve a greater goal. Necropotence is the perfect example of this. Only black would do this, sacrifice its own life for the chance at power. It's the ultimate black card and clearly represents the color's priorities. Black's weakness is that its strength is a double-edged sword, more literally than usual. Black doesn't care about itself when trying to gain power. Phyrexian Negator, Dismember, these cards are great, but they hurt you, potentially, for their power. Black believes in one thing, the end goal. It doesn't care how it gets there, even if it's bloody and half dead, as long as that power is attained, Black has won the day. That's the color's biggest weakness, utter disregard for its own safety. Red is the color of feeling. Red is every emotion brought to the surface and expanded a thousandfold. The color follows its heart and does whatever it feels it must do. This is the color of chaos, impulse, aggression, and above all, true individual freedom. While this may seem similar to black, red doesn't desire power. It simply desires the freedom to do whatever it wants. It may be power, but it may not be. Additionally, red is a very human color. While it thrives in combat and will always use a fight to get what it wants, it cares about its friends, its family, its loved ones. It is human, but it's the most uninhibited human ever. Need something? Someone standing in your way? Punch him in the face and move on. Red is about getting things done and getting them done fast. It wants what it wants and it wants it now. Instant gratification is the name of the game. At the end of the day though, it all comes back to freedom. Freedom to do whatever you want whenever you want to do it. Red's strength comes from its passion and desire to get what it wants quickly. No color is as fast or as brutal as red. When it wants something, it goes for it without hesitation. That's the biggest strength of the color. 
the ability to consciously decide on something to want and then the drive to go to great lengths to achieve it. Whether it's a massive onslaught or a complete reset, Red gives itself a goal and it accomplishes it, somehow. Given its rashness, Red's weakness should be rather apparent by now. In any given situation, Red does the first thing that comes to mind. If that doesn't work, there isn't really a plan B. If the first punch doesn't work, there really isn't a backup plan that doesn't involve more punching. A slower opponent that can survive the initial assault to mount a counterattack has the advantage. It's sometimes said that a good mono red deck will either win the game by turn 5 or start losing the game on turn 6. Green is the color of nature, there is no easier way to say that. Green believes that the world is exactly as it should be if left unchecked. Nature should be allowed to reign supreme over all living things. Green believes that everyone has a place in the world's ecosystem. It may be as a predator or maybe as prey, but everyone and everything fits somewhere. While white is the clear king of organizing the masses from on high, green believes in community and interdependence. Green knows that together with friends, it's much easier to solve problems and grow as beings. You can see this in cards like Guy's Cradle or the green sub-theme of elves. They represent this interdependent idea. Another part of this community sub-theme is growth for all. Growth together as a group, growth for nature without being stopped, rampant growth, giant growth, wild growth, titanic growth. Green is the color of flourishing. It believes everything should keep growing. This is why you see cards like Gaia's Revenge, Thrag Tusk, Crows and Cloud Scraper. These are gigantic creatures because green willed it so. Growth until you're stopped. You can see this in any game of Magic with a green deck. Board development is everything. Green's biggest strength is its raw power. No other color possesses the primal fury that green does. The creatures are all the biggest, the combat tricks are all the biggest, green has the biggest everything, that's its strength, true growth in every way. The problem with green, it's one of the more passive colors. I don't mean in combat when it feels threatened, I mean it doesn't go out of its way to perform actions it feels interfere with the natural order. Destroying artifacts or enchantments, man-made constructs, A-OK, -okay, because those things were unnatural to begin with. But green won't directly manipulate the force of death or fire to kill a creature. Direct creature removal is rare in green. Fight effects like Wild Instincts and Savage Punch are green's preferred method. You want to kill a creature? You'd better have a bigger creature. That's the natural way. Green fights head-on, matching power versus power. No funny business. That's its greatest weakness, the outright refusal to bow to what it sees as artifice. To sum up as best I can, white is the color of following orders, living a path that makes things better for those around you, believing in a code and sticking to it, being the organized person, a cog in the machine. Blue is intelligence, the hunger for knowledge, the hunger to be omniscient. Blue wants to know everything, it has to know everything, and that's all it cares about doing. Black is selfishness, black is taking the world for what it is and using it to its fullest advantage. Black desires power over all else and will do whatever it takes to get it. Red is true passion, true freedom, real emotion. This is the heart of a person. Red will do what it wants whenever it wants to. You might have no idea what it'll do, but sure as heck it's gonna do it, whatever it is. Green is the color of nature, harmony, and the desire to leave the world unchanged. Green wants everything to live, grow, and die as it's destined to, without outside interruption or interference. Well, I think that does it. There was much more I could say about each of these colors, but I feel like this was a decent start. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video, and be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in helping us survive and keep this roof over my head. I would very much like that. Check it out below. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.